Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and this is uh, a smorgasbord of topics on abrupt climate change, the U.S. elections, coronavirus, all these, all these things that have been happening lately, you know, um, very distracting to people who are trying to get their own work done with all this stuff going on. So let me just continue where I left off. In the previous video, this is part two. Um, please don't forget to cons uh, to donate to my PayPal to support my efforts, and make sure you go to my blog paulbeckwith.net to read my my poem here. It was the night before U.S. elections. Okay, so I'm just going to go to where I left off before, and you know, this is an article on psychopathy and power, which is actually fascinating. Imagine, if you will, a world run by psychopaths. This is uh, Twilight Zone, uh, Rod Serling. Um, if you haven't seen, if you don't know what I'm talking about with Twilight Zone, find it on YouTube episodes. They're just fascinating and extremely relevant, a lot of them, to what's happening today. Okay, and the idea is that, you know, there's a certain fraction of psychopaths in our society and because of their traits, if they're functioning, functioning psychopaths or sociopaths, if those that are willing to do anything to anyone are rewarded with immense wealth is part A, and part B is when you have immense wealth that translates directly to immense political power. So, you know, it's like the, uh, you know, psychopaths trickling up through companies and quickly getting positions of power, including positions uh, running the government. And, uh, you know, there's lots of interesting stuff here. Those who lack empathy are able to make the most money, okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's lots of really, really good uh, stuff there. Okay, and I didn't want to uh, go to Twitter, just again here. So um, those who lack empathy are able to do whatever it takes to make the most money. Immense wealth kills empathy, and money translates directly to political power. So it's only natural that we now find ourselves ruled by psychopaths. And there's a lot of, a lot of books out on those sort of topics and so on. This is what a psychopath's brain looks like. There's very little activity. This is the front... This is the back, very little activity in the frontal lobes here. This is blue. This is a, a PET scan, um, or it could be an MRI, and it's showing brain activity. So lots of activity in these regions, very little at the front, and these are the zones that give a person empathy, the, the ability to put themselves in others' shoes and to care about other people and so on. So, you know, the, the funny story is that the guy who was doing the studies uh, you know, all these scans found out that he himself uh, had had the patterns in his brain of, of psychopathy. You know, some excellent videos on narcissist, psychopath, or sociopath. Uh, highly recommend that you have a look at some of that stuff. Here is what a psychopath's brain looks like. So about one in a hundred people is a psychopath, experts estimate. But you can't tell a psychopath just from looking at one. There's a distinct pattern of brain activity, according to James Fallon, uh, UC Irving, Irving Irvine School of Medicine neuroscientist, who accidentally found out that he may be one himself. So he scanned the brains of dozens of people believed to be psychopaths. And this is a normal brain, the control brain, and uh, this is uh, his brain. So there's a lot of activity here in a normal brain, including here. And for his brain, he found out that there's a lot of blue here. And also, you know, scanning the brains of psychopaths, known psychopaths, they had a similar pattern. So, you know, it, it's funny. Um, and then he scanned a whole bunch of his family's um, brains. So this is, this is his brain. From a, uh, this is, so this is the frontal lobe here, very little activity. And this is a different view from, uh, so this is a side view, and this is a, a, a frontal view, and very little activity in the front of the brain here. Uh, for psychopaths, okay, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a psychopath, but if a psychopath's brain is scanned, it almost invariably has this sort of pattern. 
Uh, and this is his wife and brother, daughter, son and daughter, and these are all normal brain scans, okay? So very interesting uh, study. So that leads to the question is, uh, before we have allow somebody to take power, do we scan their brain and uh, make sure that they're not a psychopath? You know, um, so one of the ideas here, this is an interesting article. This is, so this is by the same uh, person here, okay? Um, this is by Caitlin Johnstone, and this is another article by her, that there is hope, you know, humans are waking up. You know, there's a lot of despair, our political systems locked down. People trying to upend the status quo are sabotaged by the mass media and their own political party. Think Bernie Sanders. Technology is uh, supposed to liberate humanity from its self-destructive ways, but it's being you know, owned by plutocrats, by very, very wealthy uh, individuals who have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo, and they're using the technology to monitor people and to prevent change. So... You know, there's a lot of stuff in here, but then there's, uh, you know, there is reason for, for hope, right? There is reason for, for hope, and there seems to be tipping points in human response and behavior, and more and more people are recognizing the threats that uh, we face, the threat of uh, human extinction from dis destroying ecosystems, etc. I mean, the virus is has changed a lot of people's thinking, so... You know, um, the, it seems like uh, we're about to have maybe a complete transformation or a complete, you know, more and more people are coming to see that true nature is important and awakenings on nature and awakenings that, you know, um, humanity overall remains deeply unconscious. We appear to be bound for either extinction or Orwellian dystopia if we continue on our present trajectory, but more and more people are waking up and kind of figuring this out. And we're all aware on some level that we're at a point of crisis where we'll either change or, or go extinct, or at least many of us. And crises are often the catalyst for change. So 2020, is this gonna be the year of, of huge change? And Joe Rogan interviewed this guy, Shell Drake, who Talk, very interesting. He talks about how uh, curious the, the curious way that animals sometimes appear capable of picking up new skills in ways that learning and genetics don't seem to account for. Um, and you know, human interconnection, you know, technology's um, role, the Great Awakening, that sort of thing. I mean, transcendence. Uh, you know actually having real and meaningful shifts. I mean, those things are all possible. If you're really down about about the present situation, check out this sort of article and delve into it a bit deeper. Uh, you know, so plutocrats. Uh, there's a book by Christia Freeland. I'll have to put it on my list. It looks at the lives of American elites and a disquieting look at the society that produces them. Okay, um, there's a couple other things which, you know, I can't give videos about everything, but things that I would recommend you look at. There's a federal report that warns of financial havoc from climate change. Okay, a uh, very useful report by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. They're issuing dire warnings about climate change's impact on the financial market. Okay, deep and long-lasting impacts. This is a good article in Nature Communications, New Priorities for Climate Science and Climate Economics in the 2020s. Um, okay, uh, climatetippingpoints.info, just wanna uh, uh, bring your that to your attention. Okay, it's a great site. There was a couple articles. I should probably do uh, separate videos on this. So articles on you know, and talk about climate tipping points because we're really, you know, taking risks. Okay, now the, I'm going to talk now about the insanely warm Arctic Ocean waters. They're delaying the freeze up and pouring heat into the atmosphere. So here's some temperature anomalies, huge temperatures up in the Arctic. I'll continue. Thanks.